Since aldehydes and ketones are quite electrophilic, they can react with a vast number of nucleophiles. A common reaction of aldehydes and ketones is the reaction with water giving corresponding hydrates. And while technically this type of a functional group is a geminal diol, traditionally we call them hydrates because you're always going to be making them via the reaction of carbonyls with water. And the tricky part of this reaction, this equilibrium, is that it works in neutral, acidic and basic conditions. So let's start by looking at this equilibrium in neutral conditions first. So as I've mentioned before, carbonyls are electrophilic. So if I took the acetone molecule and reacted that with water, for instance, we would expect a nucleophilic attack from water molecule onto our carbonyl, giving us the corresponding Zwitter ionic intermediate. Well, next, we are going to have a proton transfer removing a proton from one oxygen, let's say this one or the other one, and putting that onto the other oxygen. Now, some textbooks illustrate this uh, as a single step process where proton just hops from one oxygen to another one. And strictly speaking, while this is a common shortcut, it is not 100% correct as it violates the orbital symmetry rules that essentially prohibit the four-member transition state that this interaction would require to go through. And a more correct way to show this proton transfer would be using water molecule over here as a shape on. Well, in this case, the water molecule would first deprotonate one of our oxygen by grabbing one of those protons, and then it's going to carry that proton onto another oxygen, neutralizing that and giving us the final product. However, if your instructor uses the shortcut like the one that I showed above, right over here where everything happens in one step, well, I suppose you could use that too. Just remember that this is not a universally accepted shortcut cut and you may lose points if you do this outside of your class. So I would say to opt for the bottom version of this mechanism, which is strictly speaking more correct. Now, on average, aldehydes are around 1000 times more electrophilic than ketones, give or take. And this of course depends on the structure of the aldehydes and ketones. But even though the carbonyls might be electrophilic, water that we have in this reaction, when we are just doing the reaction with H2O, well, that one is not a particularly good nucleophile. So this reaction is typically catalyzed by either acids or bases. In acidic conditions, we can protonate our carbonyl, taking it from a good electrophile that it was to begin with, to an amazing electrophile because of the positive charge that we have on the molecule now. Now it is going to be more inclined to react with nucleophiles, even if it is a poor nucleophile like water. So in this case, the nucleophilic attack going to happen much easier, yielding the hydrate after the proton transfer to neutralize the intermediate. Now in basic conditions, however, we are going to use hydroxide anion as our nucleophile, which is a much better nucleophile than water due to the negative charge on the oxygen, and because of that, the electrophilicity of our carbon carbonyl is less relevant now. The nucleophilic attack in this case produces a negatively charged intermediate that we are going to neutralize by grabbing a proton from our uh, water regenerating the base and uh, that's going to give us our hydrate as the final product. So in the end, it doesn't matter which conditions you use, we're always going to get the same product, the same hydrate. Either we did that in the acidic conditions or we did that in basic conditions, the product is still the same. Using either acid or base as a catalyst going to make the process faster, but frankly speaking, this reaction is so fast as is that arguing the utility of the catalyst here is kind of pointless. What is not pointless, though, is the fact that the reaction is an equilibrium, and the state of this equilibrium does depend on the structure of the original carbonyl. Normally, when we look at an equilibrium, at any equilibrium in organic chemistry, we know that we can easily influence the equilibrium using the Le Chatelier principle. And yes, you can do it here to some extent, but the structure of the carbonyl compound would still influence the outcome the most. And let me illustrate 
illustrate this with an example of some equilibrium constants. So here in this reaction, I have just some generic equilibrium representing the carbonyl reacting with water, giving me the corresponding hydrate over here. Now, if we look at the equilibrium constants that we get from different aldehydes and ketones, we can see quite a drastic spread of K equilibrium depending on the structure. Of course, we do not expect you to memorize those numbers. However, there are two take-home messages that I want you to remember. First, aldehydes typically favor the formation of the hydrate over the carbonyl form in this equilibrium. And second, electron withdrawing groups, like let's say this CF3 over here, those electron withdrawing groups push equilibrium towards the hydrates as well. Is this going to be very relevant in synthesis? Not really, but it is going to be relevant in biological systems and some biochemically relevant reactions that you are going to learn in either the very end of the organic chemistry sequence or maybe in your biochemistry class if you take a separate class. Understanding the formation and decomposition of hydrates, however, is the first stepping stone in understanding the equilibrium of the acetals and hemiacetals, which are going to be extremely important for both synthesis and biochemical applications in the future. And talking of equilibrium here, I've mentioned that the formation of these hydrates is an equilibrium process. Well, that means that we can take the hydrate and break it back into the corresponding carbonyl and water. And of course, we can do it in acidic, basic, and neutral conditions. I'll quickly go over this mechanism in acidic and basic conditions, as those are the two conditions you are most likely going to see on the test. In acidic conditions, we are going to start by protonating the OH group, forming H2O, our leaving group, which is a good leaving group in this case. Then water is going to dissociate, and that going to give you a protonated carbonyl intermediate, which then going to quickly lose the proton to a water molecule uh, in the surroundings, giving you the final carbonyl. When it comes to the basic conditions, well, in basic conditions we are going to deprotonate our hydrate first, then we are going to push the OH out, making the carbonyl. And you might want to protest here, telling me that OH is a horrible living group. And you would have been correct if we were working in acidic or neutral conditions. Here, however, we are working in basic conditions, and in basic conditions OH can be a living group without any problems. So now, when you have a good grasp of the equilibrium associated with the hydrate formation, you are ready to learn about the acetals and hemiacetals. But that's going to be a topic for a different video. So if you don't want to miss that one, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. Thank you for watching till the very end. Check out this video next, and I will see you next time!